Ladies and gentlemen, it is January 7th, 2013, and this is The Kane and Kale Show, episode 65. I am your host, Keenan Lafferty. Today we are going to be doing a tutorial on lines, using your stylus, taking it in your very own hand, and creating art with purpose and confidence, right? But before we get into that, we are going to be going down my favorite going down to one of my favorite places. Whoa, we got a lot of stuff since the last show. Oh, man. Okay, so I think we were right around here. Yeah. So we got these awesome portraits. I, I love these pieces, but Mr. William Steele. Wow. What a manly name. And I thank you, Will, for submitting these awesome pieces here. And then, uh, yes, everybody else who submitted all of their amazing artwork to the Oh yeah, better believe it. <laughs> Everybody who submitted their awesome artwork to the Facebook, thank you very much. And please continue to do so. I'm happy that these silly little tutorials are able to help you out. Now before we jump into the tutorial, I'm going to take you to the Twitter and tell you that if you are not following me yet, please follow because I will not bug you when I am petting the cat or playing with the dog. Okay? So... With all that out of the way, let's go ahead and jump on into what we are doing today. And I had a bit of a fun idea that we should work with an old character, right? So this is Cogma Et. Cog Cogmo, or whatever we decided to call it. And we're going to be drawing her, because basically it's just like that simple anime face in my style. And... I figured it would be fun, because it's something other than Emma, and I've been drawing her every single day for the last few weeks. So let's take a little bit of a break, and let's just talk about creating line work with confidence and purpose, okay? So the first thing that I like to do here is when I start off getting ready to do a drawing, right? Uh, a lot of people have been asking me, man, I don't know why my nose is so itchy. <laughs> A lot of people have been asking me, how do I do lines and have them appear like they're they're fluid, right? Because a lot of people say they're like they're like chippy, you know, or like I've seen it myself, like where some people make sketchy lines, you know, like they'll go to draw something and it'll be like kind of like this, you know, and there's like all these little I call these flyaways. In fact, I'll make it a little bit darker so you can see. These are called flyaways, right? These these little things that come off here. And a lot of people say that they have trouble creating line work because it all looks kind of sketchy like that, right? So today we're going to talk about how to go about creating more fluid lines. And it's actually quite simple. It's mostly it's more of an exercise than anything. You'll you'll come to notice. Oh, and by the way, I hope that you guys really enjoyed the new issue of Emma. I'm really happy to have that out now. And now we can get it ready for its product state. But that is another conversation for another time. We're talking about line work here, okay? So basically what I do, is, and I've told people this before, right, is you got to practice. You must practice, right, as if you were learning karate from... The master in his own dojo, not not me, talking about Mr. Miyazaki, or whatever the guy's name is from Kung Fu, Kung Fu Kid, or what is it? <laughs> Karate Kid. All right, so you got to think about it like, like this. Like, I guess I haven't really gone back and noticed what I do, but instead of like picking up the line where it ends, like trying to connect it there, I actually go back in. Like, say I'm making a curved piece like look I almost go right back to where I started and then I go a little bit further right or maybe I go like halfway and I just be sure that all those little pieces are connecting right and then I'll go back in and I'll kind of sculpt away these lines this is basically how I start my lines right I do that and they don't have to be like perfect right because the last thing you want to do is like feel like you gotta like press down really hard you know to get like hundred percent opacity that I will show you how to get around that because if you if you work on your tablet like pushing down really hard all the time, it is going to literally kill your wrist. It will shrivel up and it will be like, uh, how could you do this to me? And it will die, and then you can't be an artist anymore. And that's really bad. 
especially if you're planning to make a living doing so. Okay, so we're going to talk about basically the initial lines, the initial sketch. Right? So pay attention to what I do here. We're just going to sketch a circle, right? And pay attention to how I do it, right? I got a little, a few flyaways there, right? Nothing too crazy. Nothing too crazy. Go ahead and just kind of lay it down like that, okay? Now notice, my line work is not super clean, right? But then what I do is I take the eraser, I go ahead and flip it around, and this is where I go back in and I'll refine those edges, right? I guess that's kind of my secret. A lot of people think that maybe I just draw a circle like perfect, but that's not the case at all. Sometimes I'll do one of these things, you know, kind of like move it, like use the motion of your hand, like use your arm to create the 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 circle at the beginning. Like I do that especially when I'm working with pencil on paper because it's a lot easier. But with digital, I feel like you have the ability to always erase 100%, whereas when you're working with pencil, you know, you put down lines like this, you can never really fully erase them all the way, and it kind of bothers me, or at least like the little indent in the paper. But with digital, you can erase all the evidence that you were ever there. So, you might as well use that to your advantage, right? So there you go. So I think the best thing to do to start doing is kind of practice making circles. Make a circle, and then go back in and kind of sculpt your circle. Sculpt it! And that's basically how I start a lot of my characters, is just with a simple circle like that. I'm going to go ahead and lighten this up, and then I'm just going to construct the rest of this face. And you are going to watch me, pay attention, and take notes. And we're not dropping frames, that's really good. It's really good. That makes me oh so happy. Speaking of that, today was just such a good day, because I went for a good old-fashioned bike around the block, and I'm feeling sassy. Mm-hmm. I ate a bean and cheese burrito for dinner. For dinner. And you know what I love about it is I got like these whole wheat, whole wheat tortillas. I'm totally segueing into something. I'm used to doing like <laughs> when I do live streams, I usually talk about my day. And since today is the Kane Kale stream, I'm gonna go ahead and talk about stuff because this is uh, kind of boring. You know, all I'm doing is just dividing the circle in half with the ellipse, and I'm getting ready to throw in the the eyes or the facial features right so but anyway i had a bean and cheese burrito with a whole wheat tortilla and what's great about that is the whole wheat actually is a little bit sweeter it's a little bit sweeter than a usual flour tortilla so it is extra scrumptious and it fills my tummy and it complements the beans cheese and cholula oh so perfectly and that makes us all very very happy Okay, so the next thing I want to talk about with lines is, look, pay attention to what's happening here. Look at how sketchy these are, right? I'm going to zoom in really close so that way you can really get the hang of this. Right? How are we looking over here? Uh, that looks good. So pay attention to how sketchy these lines are and then what I do to go back in and refine them. Right? So I know that for the most part, a lot of my characters, like especially Emma, her eyes start just below this center ellipse line, right? Her eyes start just beneath that. And then the tops of them can go above it, but the edges are down there, right? And then her eyes kind of follow like this. And then I just go back in, like when I'm sketching stuff, I'll keep the guidelines kind of there, so I'll kind of just erase them a little bit, okay? I don't even know what time we started at. Or, what am I talking about? I started at 7. Duh. Duh. I might have started a couple minutes later just because I was trying to get stuff figured out with the stream. Okay, so we start like that, right? Alright, and then we're going to go ahead and sketch in the other, the bottom part of the eye, which is coincidentally halfway between half, half of half the circle. Right? That's where the bottoms of the eyes go, more or less. Kagina, that was her name, Kag Kagina. We're drawing Kagina today. Oh, you can't see that until I do that. Today we're drawing Kagina. The girl with the eyes on her cheeks. In fact, maybe I'll just keep that there so you have something nice to look at while I'm sketching this absurdness. 
Lovely. Okay. So let's go ahead and move into the other eye. And the way that I place these lines is I think about where the mouth is, right? The mouth is existing, I know, right on the edge of that circle, right? Because that is the rules, and I encourage you that if you have characters of your own, you construct their faces and stuff like that with simple shapes at first. You can see how things kind of line up with each other, and after a little while, you'll start to realize that your characters' faces have like certain rules, right? Certain rules that make them look like that character. And those rules you want to follow. Okay, so now I'm going to talk a little bit about what I'm doing here with the eye. Why well, I'm able to create a shape like that and have it look good with a shape like that, right? Meaning the eyes. So let's go ahead and examine these really quickly. I know that's a little bit off topic, but that's nah, about lines too. Because you want to keep in mind that when you're doing lines, like how the perspective of what you're drawing is, you know, how it's being affected. So let's go ahead and take a look at this. We've got this shape here, right? And we know that basically because this shape is going up like this and kind of curving around, sort of informing us as to what is happening with the space, right? Like if the eyelash exists here on this line, if you follow that, like check out this ellipse line, right? Because the ellipse is going like that because the head is pointed slightly down. If we follow that same exact ellipse around, it ends up right there, right? So the eyelash should be right around there. And then this one, the reason why this kind of goes down and then this one goes down as well, like they're both lines going that way, is because you want to think about the rounding of the eye. Even though it's an anime person, usually they have like flat eyes, you want to think about the rounding of the eye that's happening there, right? And that's a cool little, cool little trick that kind of like adds depth to your character's face, and I really, really like doing that a lot. So the rounding of the eye here, and you can even do it a little bit here, you know, because you want to think about this giant eye that could somehow exist in this head. <laughs> this giant eye that could somehow, actually, it'd probably be more like ovular if it was like an anime person. If this person could actually exist in real life, they would have weird ovular eyes. And that would be existing inside of the skull. And that's just good old fashioned fun. And then by drawing this, you're showing depth of the eye. And that is why that line kind of goes down, and that line kind of does that. Okay? So that's basically just explaining how, and, and you'd be surprised. You should look at how the perspective affects real people's eyes too, because it's not like, you know, you have an eye like this. Well, that's going to look weird. It's not usual that you have like a person's eye here, right? And then here's their, their nose. Right? And they're, they're happy. And then when they, like, on this side of the face, it's the same eye, but it's just, like, flattened, you know? Or it's squished. Like, that doesn't happen. Doesn't happen. If you look at the way people's eyes work, they usually do something like, like that, you know? Like, and then you see the rounding of that eye there in the eyelid. Hey, hey. And then this guy's suave. There we go. Suave man. But I digress. Let's get back to line work and what it can do for you. Okay, so I've laid in these basic lines here. Okay? And what I'm going to do since today is a live, a live Kane Kale show, I'm going to go ahead and take questions at the end of it. And I usually don't have like a real schedule for the Kane Kale show. Usually they go about half an hour to 40 minutes. So um, yeah, I'll go I'll go till around like 7.30 and then see how we feel and I'll take some questions. And then I can explain a few more things too. That'll be actually really nice. That's something I didn't even think about. So at 7.30, ready your questions and then you can ask me and I will explain a few of them. And then we'll wrap up Kane Kale Show episode 61. 
Okay, so this is pretty easy. It's pretty easy. Actually, wait, wait. Kagina does not frown. She's not Emma. Kagina is happy. She's happy and she's got that little Japanese girl tooth thing that all those Japanese girls are doing over in Japan. That creepy tooth thing. And she has tear ducts. How about that, Kagina? All right, and then she has little eyes on her cheeks. I don't know exactly how this works, but they're there. <laughs> they're there because Kogma has four eyes. And like two little sensor thingies. I don't even know like what's going on with his head. But he is awesome. So let's give her those second eyes. And that's just precious. Okay, so you can see basically how my lines are coming together here, right? And I'll basically sketch out the entire character like this, right? And the reason why I like working in a light color, as I've stated before, is it just seems like it's easier to work with. Like, if you're working with black and you're trying to do, like, line sketches, it's just, I don't know, like the flyaways are so much more, like, like they bother my eye like it's like there and there like these are bugging me that's bugging me and this is bugging me but if you work on a lighter color it just seems to lower the contrast and it doesn't bug your eyes as much and it seems more malleable I don't know exactly how to describe it but I just like sketching in a lighter color I usually do just like a light gray I've also seen other people do like red or light blue, you know, kind of like a comic book artist pencil. In fact, that's what I do. I usually sketch in light blue when I'm doing the comic. Just because it gives me a little, little tingly feelings, makes me feel like I'm an actual comic artist. <laughs> uh, okay, so let's round off her chin here a little bit. And let's go ahead and continue. She's got like like tear ducts and then she's got like little extra eye things. I don't know exactly what's going on with this chick. It's a little bit creepy. But that's fine. She's just a little she's just a little girl void monster thing. I don't know. Alrighty. Huh? She's looking very devious now. You'd be surprised how much the eyebrows add to a character. They really, really add a lot of emotion and awesomeness to your character. So I would very, very much so encourage you to uh, play around with the facial features, especially the eyes. How much of the eye you have showing, like like talking about like the actual pupil and the, the iris, depending on how much of that is actually showing, like if you just round this, it'll make your character look more alert. You know, and if you drop down the eyelid or show less of the iris, it makes them look a little bit more relaxed and maybe sleepy. So that's kind of fun to do. All right, so you can see basically here, um, slowly but surely, I kind of go back in here and just erase those guides just a little bit, you know, just a tiny bit. I, I like to leave a little bit left just for, like, reference. I don't know exactly. I just leave it there anyway. So let's go ahead and give her some ears, okay? So let's go ahead and go over here. And just throw in our ears, throw in our stylized ears, because we like that. And let's go up and down and up again. And she's got like this little scaly thing. Looks like a piece of hair, but I, I see it more as like a scale type thing. In fact, I want to render it more as a scale thing. There we go. That's just good old-fashioned fun. And then as I'm painting the hair, I'll go in here and I'll erase this guideline of the circle that originally was placed there. But not all the way, because I'm still going to need it. You don't just go like that, and then you have nothing to work with. You know, you got to remember where that circle is, because just off of that circle is where her hairline goes, right? It pops off a little. So that's another thing. I guess that's why I don't erase my guidelines so quickly. It's because you never know when you're going to need them. Only erase them when you never want to see them again. Alrighty. Let's go ahead and go up like this. 
hair connects up here and back like that. So I'm just going to do like a like a little headshot and then we'll go ahead and go in here and I'll show you how I would go ahead and ink this and how I would create the final line work. You know, like the final clean lines for a comic. Okay? Because there's another way that I like to do it and that's just basically where I go back in here and I'll sculpt and sculpt and sculpt and erase and erase and erase. And I'm starting to realize that it might seem like I'm saving time, but uh, I don't know if I am. <laughs> and the and the result is just not as good. But there's still something about it that I like. I don't know what it is. I'll just go in here and sculpt and sculpt and sculpt and sculpt. You know? So, I don't know. I might be phasing that out pretty soon. But regardless, I will show you the right way to do it. The right way that probably a lot of other people do it. I just got these little horns going on here, these little hair horn things. It's ribbon spikes, that's that's what they are, the ribbon spikes. She's Riven's daughter. Riven and Kogma's daughter, that's kind of weird. That's a little scary. Don't think about that. Alright, and we'll just bring it down. <laughs> Uh, this is funny. <laughs> I like this character. I was inspired to do this by those uh, crazy comics. The uh, I forget if they're Korean or Japanese. I don't know what they are, but they have this. They have like this uh, female rendition of Chogoth, where it's just like a girl, and she has like this weird little Halloweeny looking tuxedo thing on. And then they also have like little girl Kogma, and I was like, that's pretty dang cute. That's just precious. So I was like, all right, I'm going to draw that in my style. And I did, and the day was won. So, okay, so that's looking pretty good. And I just need to give her her little tendril things. That is a must, must have that. And then we'll go ahead and jump into the lines. Uh, just checking the chat really quick. Hmm. <laughs> And another reason why I like to keep these lines very sketchy is because sometimes I'll go back in here and I'll kind of like, kind of chip away at stuff. Like, say I want to bring her cheek in a little bit. Like, I'll just draw that line and then I'll erase the previous ones. And say, like, this head, like this area right here is sticking out too much. So what I'll do is I'll just draw some new lines in there and I'll just kind of erase it, right? And then if I don't like it, I always have the history on the side here. You guys can see that, right? Yeah, the history right here. This is like one of my best friends because I'll like click back, I'll click back, and then I'll go forward again and just kind of compare those two things. This is a big thing when I'm creating line work because it's just a quick way to see, okay, was that a good thing or a bad thing? I think it was a good thing. So we're going to go ahead and keep that. It was successful, Doctor. All right, tendrils. Come on, baby tendrils. And also, I played some Black Ops today, and I freaking kicked some butt! So that's why I'm also in a really good mood. <laughs> I had way too much fun today. And last night, you know, staying up till 5 in the morning, getting the issue done. You know what I'm talking about. You know what I'm talking about. Good old blood, sweat, and tears going into the comic. It is kind of funny to think that just like a couple months ago, you know, my idea was just an idea. I was like, hey, I want to make a comic. And just today, I released the final 11 pages of it and completed issue one. And I was like, whoa. This is like here. Like, I, I did this. I made this from nothing. Nothing. It was just a thought in my head. And then I just did it like that's awesome how cool is that and a lot of people are reading it and loving it as far as I'm concerned I could die tomorrow and I'd be a happy man like that's that's like a big goal of mine that I've had for a long long time to make a comic now that it's here it's just like whew. yeah well it seems like it happened you know too too soon you know it's like no I feel too good feel too good. I shouldn't be allowed to feel this good. It's like I'm cheating life. 
Alrighty then. So let's go ahead and begin the lining process. Yes. Yes. Alright guys, so that is basically how my line work looks, right? So I hope that you guys were able to watch me, watch the way that I did it, and notice that I wasn't pressing like hard like this, trying to make perfect lines all the time. I was actually just kind of like going through and I kind of do this thing where I'll kind of like do it a few times, you know, to make it darker. And I've kind of gotten in that that habit. And I've kind of developed like motions that I can do with my wrist that creates the shape that I want. And I'm never really rotating the canvas or like rotating the, the freaking Wacom or anything, right? It's like if I need to position myself differently, sometimes I'll work like this. And I'll like make a line up like that. And then I'll go over here. And I'm like... I'm working like this, but the tablet stays exactly where it is. I don't know if that's exactly the technique that you want to do, but that's what works for me. I've become really, really comfortable with working with this tablet to the point where I can position myself. Like, I can position myself like this way, and I know exactly where the line's going to go. You know? Weird. Hard to explain. But let's go ahead and jump into lining this puppy. Okay. Okay. So, for those of you who are interested in the brushes that I use, I actually uploaded these to DeviantArt, and you can download them for free and use them. I'm going to be going to my ink brush. Uh, well, for the purpose of this tutorial, I'm actually not going to use my ink brush that I use for the comic. I'm just going to use the actual ink brush, which is basically a round brush that is always at 100% opacity, but it's only affected by... Uh, the size is only affected by the the tablet, right? The pressure. The pressure only affects the size. That's what I was trying to say. So this is your tool that will also save your wrist because when you're going in and making clean line art, this is a godsend. I cannot tell you how good this is going to be for you. So make sure you, you either create a brush like this or download the brushes off DeviantArt and use these. But again, it's just a... a round brush that's at 100% opacity all the time and it's only being affected by its size. So make sure you select that as your brush and your eraser. Okay? Because we're going to go in and we're going to create some clean line art. So let's go ahead and jump out into that. And I don't like to use like straight black. I'll actually use like really, 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 really dark red. And let's go ahead and jump in and do this. Let's zoom in. So pay attention. Pay attention to what I do here. So I'm going in and I'm just using this 100% opacity tool. And I like to pay attention to what size I'm using, right? So 10 might be like the the general size that I like to use. So I don't want to go to like all of a sudden to, to like 40 like try to create the line because that's going to look weird, you know? So hover around, pick your brush size, and then stick very close to that. So I'm going to go ahead and use a 10. Okay? I'm going back in here. And I create weight to the line by kind of going over it a couple times, you know? Notice how I'm, like, composing it. It's like I'm building the line. Building the line as opposed to just going, mm -hmm. oh, that didn't work. Mm -hmm. Well, that looks okay, but I'm building the line. And I guess it's just the practice or it's the constant doing of this that will build your confidence with your lines, right? That will allow you to always just like hit that same line and add a little bit more to it. And then when you don't, right, if you got these little flyaways, you've got your eraser set to the ink brush too, so that way you don't have to press really hard. Because here, here's one thing I never want you to do. I never want you to draw a picture like this, right? And then have your eraser set to something like, you know, the usual, uh, I don't even think I have it. But say this is like, <laughs> say this is like the regular round brush, right? And it has the opacity setting on your pressure sensitivity, right? I never want you to do this, like go back in and like have to erase like by pressing hard, right? Because that's annoying. Sometimes you get like little things like that, and you're like, ah, uh, jeez, uh, uh, okay, I got it. Oh, no, wait, wait, okay. There, and there's still like little remnants of that in there. 
So what you should be doing is making sure that your eraser is also set to that full opacity brush. So that way you can press very, very lightly and do one of those. Okay? And your wrist will thank you. Okay? Trust me, I've had way too many wrist problems to see anybody else go through that crap. And here's the thing, it starts with your wrist and then it goes to your back and your neck and it's another thing, that, that's why I'm kind of happy that I'm working standing up. I can sit down too, I have a chair. But a lot of your working posture, trust me, it will get to you. It will affect you. So make sure that you are sitting up straight and you are working comfortably and you're taking breaks, right? Take breaks and crack your wrist or, you know, like I do. My wrist always cracks. But uh, stretch it and take ample breaks, especially when you're doing line art, man. Like this is... There's a reason why I haven't done this tutorial yet, because line art is actually one of my least favorite things to do. Right? I hate lining. It's so boring. But it is a necessary evil that you must do in order to get your line art clean. Like, I love clean line art. I love it when it's all done, you just look at it and you're like, yeah, yeah, I did that, and that looks good. You know? It's just ready for color. I love coloring. Coloring is so fun. The lining is just ugh, boring. Boring and tedious, and it hurts my hand. I don't like it. But that's enough moaning and groaning. Let's go ahead and get back to this. Okay? Now that my disclaimer is out of the way. So you can notice, like, what's happening here is like, there's all kinds of little imperfections in here. And really, what this comes down to is how good does it need to be, right? Because I can go back in here and kind of clean these up, right? This will take a little while, right? But you'll get like super, super clean, good looking line art if you go back through it and, and do that, you know, for everything. You know, you kind of clean this up, take away that little, you know, that little fly away there, kind of sculpt those edges, you know, it's almost like you're shaving away those little imperfections. But for me, I usually don't like that. In fact, here, let me show you really quickly. Let me go to my ink brush that I use for the comic and one of the reasons why I like it. One of the reasons why I like this brush for the comic is because itself, it itself has like this texture to it, right? Look at that. This lends itself to doing a little bit sloppier of line art, right? This lends itself well to not being perfect. And I really like that because it just adds to the style of the comic. And it makes the ever laborious task of me lining stuff just a little bit less stressful, right? Because then you can have like those little flyaways and it's like, hey, it's style, it's cool, right? But like if you're working with this thing, you know, it's like all those lines and you know, it's like, it looks like an illustrator file, you know, it has to be all perfect. So that is one of the reasons why I love lining with this baby right here. In fact, now that I'm using this, I might just, I just keep using it. <laughs> but see how much easier it is? Like, look at that. Look at me just like slapping those things in there. And it's like, hey, that's cool. Stylistic. It's got style. You know, but with this one, with this one, it's like, okay, all right, yeah. Yeah, if I try to put style on this, it just looks like, ugh, it looks ugly, you know? So, I guess what I'm trying to get at here is, like, for people looking to get line art, like, clean line art, you got to figure out what style you want, honestly. Like, if you like doing line art, and you like it to be super clean, then use that 100% opaque round brush, right? But if you're like me, and you really don't like it a lot, find a cool brush, find a cool brush that you can use, that again, look look at this, it's always 100% opacity, right? So it's the same rule that's on this brush. However, it is much, it lends much more to having like those slight little imperfections in it, right? Because the brush itself is textured. And so it looks cool. And then that allows you to make broader strokes, more, more confident strokes, and in the end, it just makes it look cool, right? Because, I mean, look at that. 
Look at those little tiny things in there, right? Those little tiny things that happen when I do that. That is just I I love the person who gave me this brush. I think it was my coworker, Josh. And that man is amazing. And he showed me this brush right before I started doing the comic. And I was like, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> so I would experiment with uh, just finding some brushes. You can find all kinds of cool brushes on DeviantArt. And again, if you want to download the ones that I'm using, they are on DeviantArt for free. You can get my entire brush pack on there. And it will change your life. It will change your lining life. But the funny thing is, is that when I go back in and I refine these things, I'm not using that same brush, right? Don't use the same brush to refine the line. Because it's a little bit unpredictable. I mean, look at the shape of it. Can you see that? It's like, okay, is that going to... No, that's not going to touch it. Uh, okay, that kind of got it. You know, it's, it's a little bit unpredictable. That's why I use, for the eraser, that regular round brush. brush because I know exactly where it's going to go, what it's going to erase. Okay, okay. So let's continue. Let's continue aligning this face. And oh, hey, we're at 740. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and take some questions. Anybody who has a question, please post it in the chat to your right. And I'll take your questions while I'm finishing aligning this face. And they will wrap up episode 65. All right. So fire away. All right. Go ahead and take care. It does look like a dinosaur. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. It looks like a reptar. <laughs> the reptar brush. That's what I'm going to call it. <laughs> oh, man. That's awesome. Oh, thank you. <laughs> thank you, Mr. Usernames Joe. Thank you, Mr. Joe. You made my night. I love people, I love people, I love people, because they ask good questions, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, so coming in from Noish78, he asks, I know you are mainly self-taught, but, oh, I'm going to go back. I know you're mainly self-taught, what was your method of for practicing? Any helpful websites, people, books, or anything else that you, I'm going to assume you're going to say, oh, anything that I used or any recommendations. Uh, Mr. Noish, yes. I self-taught myself by, basically, I was always looking at other artists' work, right? I didn't, uh, like, for me, there's all kinds of different learning techniques, right? And you got to figure out which one works best for you because picking up a book or going to a class and have somebody else teach me how to make art, personally, not my favorite type of thing. I'm more of like a hands-on type of person. Like if someone were to like sit down with me and be like, hey, check this out. Like watch the way that I do this as opposed to, well, these are the ways that, you know, the opposite of the color wheel makes the complementary and that balances the piece. You know, that's boring. I don't care about that. It's like, show me what you mean. Like do it. Show me and, and then actually demonstrate it. So uh, a big way that I learned was looking constantly at other people's work, right? And this can become a little bit of, I mean, it's a double-edged sword, right? Because you're all, you can fall into, and you probably will fall into sometimes the trap of always comparing your art to somebody else's, right? And you're like, oh, well, this person's doing that, and I, you know, I want to be good, but I'm not as good as them, and, you know, maybe I should just give up, you know, and don't don't do that okay because you're learning and you will get there okay use that person check out what they're doing see what they're doing what are they succeeding at what could they do better and then always keep I always tell everybody that I meet that's an artist to do this right it's like always pay attention to what the unique thing that you do is I, I really believe that everybody who's an artist has that one unique thing that they do better than anybody else and that's the one thing you always have to make sure that you never lose okay you can always improve your craft and you know do what somebody else is doing but don't become a clone and don't don't just become you know what that teacher told you to be or a good artist in everybody else's eyes you know like do that one little thing 
that sets you apart from everybody else and make sure that you always have that it's like your secret weapon right you got all the the fundamentals and everything of art you know and in your arsenal but then you got that secret weapon that only you have so make sure you do that all righty mm -hmm. all righty mister Valkyo D is asking I'll take two more questions after this. Valkyo D or yeah, Valkyo D is asking, how much traditional drawing do you think one needs before going full digital? Before going full digital. I like that. <laughs> um to be honest, I I don't think you need a lot. I, I don't know. It's hard to explain because I started doing digital by scanning my pencil drawings and then coloring them, right? And to be honest, I still prefer doing lines and like drawing with pencil and paper. The only reason I like digital more is because, like I said before, you can completely erase mistakes and you can tailor your line art to be like almost perfect, you know? You can redo and like see things, you know, over and over again in different ways. Whereas with pencil, there's no like undo button. You do it and you gotta like get in there and kind of erase it, you know. But there are things there's pros and cons to each. I think that there's just an element of pencil drawing that you can't exactly capture with digital. But I feel that digital is more precise and clean. So with that being said, I would say there's no real requirement, but make sure that you don't just always do digital. It's actually a really, really nice break. Like whenever I go on a trip or something somewhere and I don't have my computer, I'll have my sketchbook, right? You know, my sketchbook. Right now it's just filled with notes. But um, I'll actually draw with pencil and paper. How about that? And it's actually very, very relaxing and very, very good for the soul. Two more questions. Two more questions. Hmm. Dragon five two 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 or five two 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 five. Mr. Dragon is asking, would you ever consider a tutorial on something as polished as a riot splash page for a Kane and Kale show? Well, Mr. Dragon, let me tell you. Um, I would like to do that, but in order to do that, I would need to actually create a piece that actually went to that polish level. And to be honest, like it's, I, I love working on those riot splashes, but those take weeks to do. Those take weeks. So it would be hard for me to like prepare. Like you notice this show is like, hey, let's start something, right? And it would be hard for me to prepare something that would take that long and then go in and be like, okay, now we're going to like render things. I'd rather like break it up into little chunks. Like my idea for the show was like kind of that mix between, you know, because there's tons of tutorials about like really, really basic stuff, right? Like, hey, let's draw Naruto, right? And then you have like some other tutorials over here that are like really, really advanced stuff. And I was like, well, what about like, I feel like there's not enough tutorials about like the in-between things. Like, what about all those things that get you from point A to point B? And that's kind of what I'm trying to uh, focus on. So as far as a tutorial on polishing, like creating an entire piece like that, um, I would love to break it up into little pieces and talk about like maybe different materials and like layout decisions. But um, it's probably not going to happen very often. Unless it gets requested by like thousands of people, then you know I might just have to do that. <laughs> but from what I hear, um, a lot of people are asking. Actually, a lot of people have been asking for a lot more basic stuff. Okay, last question, and then we end episode sixty-five. And I hope I, I wasn't like, I hope I wasn't superly aggressively answering that question. Be like, no, never. <laughs> Jason Herring. Oh, Jason, you have an amazing question. I almost fell over because I got lightheaded because of how awesome that was. <laughs> Jason Herring's asking, drawing in your sketchbook when you're a new artist can be tough. Do you recommend copying artists' art first? Jason Herring, you hit the nail on the head because that was actually one of my favorite things to do. When I was teaching myself, I would literally copy something. I would copy something, right? I saw this picture of like this anime girl, right? I'd be like, hey, I'm gonna copy that. And I'd copy that exact face 
And then after I did that, I learned a lot. I was like, well, hey, oh, that's cool how they like, she was like wearing a jacket. And I was like, oh, that's cool how he drew that wrinkle, you know, in the shoulder there and then like shaded it that way. And then sub subsequently, sub sub I don't even know what, what I'm trying to say. <laughs> after that, every time I drew a character with a jacket, I'd be like, oh, I remember I did that one little line there, right? And I can create a cool little shape and a, and a shading pattern there. So I would highly recommend, you know, if this works for you and you want to learn something, don't be afraid to just like straight up copy somebody else's work. However, I don't think you should post it to DeviantArt and be like, hey, look what I do. You know, if you're going to do that, make sure you get permission from the other person first and be like, hey, I was studying your work and I decided I wanted to replicate it. Is it okay if I post this online? You know, because if you don't do that, that can be really, really rude and <laughs> really tick some people off. But there's nothing wrong with like keeping it for yourself and being like, hey, I'm going to sketch this person's thing and like completely copy it. Exactly. And then what you'll find is after that, you'll be able to pull that knowledge and be like, oh, I remember this guy did that. And you kind of like take everything that you've learned. Because learning is like, is just like grabbing everything around you and then you like mush it into a big ball and then slam it into your head. And then, and then mix it around in there and you mix in all your little flavors and you come up with your own style, right? Your style is just the influences that have been happening all around you, right? So I would very, very highly suggest that you take a look at other artists that you love, especially with their drawings or their style, and just, just copy them. Just learn how to do that, because that's what I did, and that's basically how I self-taught myself. All right, guys, so we are going to end episode 65 of the Kane and Kale Show. Thank you guys once again for tuning in live to the Ustream. For those of you on YouTube, maybe you can join us next time. The MS stream is up every Monday through Thursday at 7 p.m. Pacific Standard Time if you ever want to tune in and watch me working on the comic. Although this week it might be just maybe some more sketching or something because we just finished that last piece and it might be a little bit before I start issue two. But regardless, thumbs up if you like it, thumbs down if you don't. I'm Ken Lafferty and I'll see you guys later.